Welcome back folks, hope you're doing well. And uh, I've got an interesting one this week. We're going to be doing brioche buns, but we're not doing any old brioche buns. Oh no. Burger brioche bun. And we're actually going to be making our own burgers from scratch. Now as for the brioche buns, we're actually going to be doing a tangzong method, which is a Japanese method which will help the softness and also prolong the life, which kind of a waste of time in this household. So as for the burgers, we're going to be using three different types of meats. We're going to use chuck we're also going to be using a little bit of forib and also sirloin as well so we're going to turn them into some delightful little patties in addition we're going to be serving it with some of this and some of this and some of this and even yes you know what's coming up some of this as well i couldn't resist it was time for some bacon so we're going to show you the perfect brioche bun and also the perfect burger, regardless of what fillings you want in your burger. But in my opinion, you can't go wrong with this. So I hope you guys and gals are going to enjoy the video. So the first thing we want to do is make the brioche buns and we need to start making that tang zong paste so it can cool down. So we're going to need 90 ml of milk or six tablespoons. In addition, we want 30 grams of plain flour or purpose flour or quarter of a cup and just a little pinch of salt, not too much. And then we're gonna pop it onto the stove onto a medium heat, whisking it gently until that paste comes together. So it's gonna take about four to five minutes just to cook out. So after about five minutes, you should have a nice sticky paste. So also I do recommend switching over from whisk to spatula. Might make your life a little bit more easier. So place this into a bowl. Let that paste cool down and then we can add that to our brioche. So next we're going to need 125 ml of milk or half a cup and we're going to heat this up to 35 Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit. And the reason why we're going to that temperature is the optimal temperature for the yeast. So it doesn't get too hot and you kill it or it doesn't get too cold and it doesn't proof. So super important you get the temperature right with this. So while we're waiting for the milk to heat up, we're going to weigh out 500 grams or four cups of bread flour or strong flour. So as well as uh, kind of uh, forgetting about my milk on the stove and it being absolutely scalding hot, uh, I actually forgot to add the sugar as well, which we needed to dissolve. So as this is pretty hot, we're gonna add the sugar now. And you're looking for 60 grams of caster sugar or fine granulated sugar. So once that's dissolved down and cooled down, we're ready to go. So also one thing I forgot, to... Ooh. we also need to take these out and obviously let them soften up, which I totally remembered, right? And also we need to bring the eggs up to room temperature, which is going to take about an hour. So the milk is at the right temperature now. We're going to need three teaspoons of dry active yeast into this. And once you've added the yeast, give it a mix until it's dissolved. Grab our mixer and add the hook attachment. And don't forget one more pinch of salt into the flour. And then we're going to add our tangzong paste. And then turning that onto a low speed. Have I done it again? I guess so. It's just not my day today, is it? And then once on a low speed, mix for about one or two minutes and then add the yeasty milky mix. Then you want to leave that to mix for a couple of minutes. And then we're going to add the room temperature eggs one at a time. Then we're going to pick up the speed to a medium and then beat that for about five to 10 minutes. So once that's nice and smooth, we're going to start adding the butter little by little into the mix. So 113 grams or half a cup of butter. So after a great deal of kneading, your dough should be looking at something like this. It should be nice and soft nice smooth consistency and what we're going to do is just going to help pull this back together into a nice little ball and eventually it should be looking something like this so we're going to pop that into a bowl just a very light dust in the flour not much at all <coughs> oh, excuse me and then covered with cling wrap and we're going to set this aside somewhere warm where it's going to double in size. So it's time to start making those beautiful burgers. And we've got some beautiful four ribs here. So 450 grams or a pound. We've also got some New York strip sirloin here. So we've got a pound of that 450 grams. And we got three quarters of a pound or 340 grams of chuck steak as well. So we're going to start prepping up the ribs. And we're just going to basically remove the bone and then just cut them into small little dices. Or shall I say small little cubes? Also, don't forget to keep the bones. You can also freeze these down and use these for a beef stock at a later date. Then you want to do the same with the sirloin. And also, if you notice any sinew, make sure you try and remove it out. This one looks pretty good to me so that I can't see any silver lining or sinew in here. So we should be good. And I just found a little bit of sinew here. So we're just going to take that out. 
chuck that in for the beef stock. And then obviously the chuck as well, the same again. And if you see any sinew, just remove that with the knife. So there we go, we've got our meat diced up. So this is gonna go in the freezer for about an hour to really firm up, which is gonna help push it through the grinder. In addition, you also wanna chill the grinder down as well, which will help push the meat through a lot easier as well. So while that meat is freezing down, I'm gonna preheat the oven to 180 Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit. And uh, this is not for the uh, brioche buns. I'm pretty sure you know what's coming now. This nice, beautiful, fresh packet. Well, well, I kind of snuck into it before the start of the video. That delightful, cheeky smoked bacon. Goodness me, what an absolute little dream. So we're gonna pop these in the oven. They're gonna take about roughly five to 10 minutes until golden and crispy. So does that mean our channel's officially a bacon channel now? So I'm gonna go for iceberg for our burger. So we're gonna basically dice this up about a quarter of the head. Actually, I changed my mind. We're just gonna keep it whole and we're gonna tear the lettuce when we want it. So I'm gonna pop it into a colander. I'm gonna give this a wash and set this aside. Now, usually American cheeseburgers usually have to have the American cheese slices, but I just can't really bring myself to it. I really don't like it. So what we're gonna be using instead is uh, some Swiss cheese. Wow, wow, that's a, that's a big hole. Sure a mouse hasn't been at this. So we're gonna take about eight slices of the Swiss cheese, or you can grate it entirely up to you and there it is that glorious crispy bacon so we're going to drain off the uh, bacon fan we can also use that for later on if we want to or for something else um, and we're going to put the bacon set it aside so next we're going to be making the burger sauce now usually i make my own mayonnaise but i didn't want to make it too complicated today because we've got a lot of things going on if you really want to try my homemade mayonnaise recipe i will put it up in the description box so we're going to need four tablespoons of mayonnaise two tablespoons of heinz ketchup one tablespoon of yellow mustard. Oh, excuse me. Half a teaspoon of paprika. One teaspoon of onion powder. And one teaspoon of garlic powder. Now, depending on the choice of your pickles, we're gonna go for about six to eight bread and butter pickles. Now you can put whatever brand you want in there. Entirely up to you. And then we're just gonna cut them down into a small dice. Then we're gonna add it to the mix. And then give that a mix up. So before we grind the burger meat, this little bad boy needs a little bit of attention as it's uh, doubled in size now. So what we're gonna do is pretty much take the cling film off. Boop. Donuts. Just joking. And then just gently take it out of the bowl onto the table. And then we're gonna knock the air out of it. Nice and, well, I say gently. So grab your weighing scales and we're gonna cut this into six equal size portions. So we're roughly looking for about 80 to 85 grams per portion. So basically using your thumb and your palm of your hand to swirl around that beautiful dough. So you tuck it in the thumb as you go in round and round. And you should make a nice beautiful bun ready to go. So pop them onto a silt mat, or you can use parchment paper if you haven't got these, and then just gently just push them down just a little smidge. Not too much, we don't want too much of a round, but we want a nice beautiful oval for the bun itself. So you've got two options for proving. Either you can put a large tray over the top and let them proof until doubled in size, or you can just brush them very lightly with oil and then cling foam over the top. Choice is up to you. Also, don't forget to preheat your oven. If you still haven't got on from the bacon, 180 Celsius or 350. So an hour's been and gone. The meat is nice and firm. The grinder is actually stone cold. So we're gonna attach this now to the KitchenAid. So we're gonna turn the grinder onto a low. Oh, look, I actually plugged it in for a change. I thought this camera might be appropriate. And then start slowly adding the meat, popping it in through the top. And hopefully it should be coming out the other end. So just gently pushing it through. Making sure you got a bowl as well to catch the meat underneath. Might be a good idea. So many moons later and deciding probably I should have used a bigger bowl. So I bet you're thinking, what are we gonna add to the burgers? And do you know what we're gonna add? Nothing. We're gonna keep it natural, all 100% beef. So we're gonna season them before we char grill them off. But we're gonna roll these into nice little patties now, roughly about eight to 10 ounces, depending on how big you want your burgers. So we're just gonna give this a mix just to make sure it's all incorporated nice and evenly. 
And that's what we're looking for, roughly about eight ounces. So there we go, there's our eight ounce burgers and we're left with a little smidge as well, so a little patty there. So uh, if you wanna make more burgers out of this, you can reduce this down to six ounces, have them a lot thinner. You could probably get six to eight burgers then. So uh, entirely up to you what size burgers you want. So our buns are doubled in size now and these are gonna go in the oven for roughly about 20 to 30 minutes till golden and crispy. Also grab yourself 50 grams of unsalted butter or three and a half tablespoons. You're gonna put this onto the stove to melt or in the microwave. Trust me, you're gonna need it when those brioche buns come out. Look at those little devils right there. Goodness me, they have come out perfect. So these little gems took about 20 minutes instead of 25. So keep an eye on them. I'd say probably more about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on your oven. If you've got a fan assisted oven, be quicker. If you haven't, probably 20 to 25. So we're gonna let these buns cool down and then we're gonna start cooking the burgers. So we got ourselves a cast iron griddle pan here. So uh, we're gonna get this like super hot and then we're gonna season the burgers. So we're gonna season up this burger and we're actually gonna use our sponsored salt. So the Bourbon Smoked Sea Salt from the Salty Dog Spice Company. So feel free to go check them out. They'll be below in the description box. So you want a small amount of oil on each side of the burger and then a good pinch of salt on each side as well. So as we actually ground our own burgers ourselves, we can actually cook it rare, medium rare. I think we're gonna go medium rare today, so probably about four minutes to five minutes each side. And I'm gonna put a bit of cheese on and then about two minutes in the oven just until that cheese is melted. So this is nice and hot now, so the burger's gonna go straight down. Oh, that sizzle. Delicious. And then flip that bad boy over. Look at that. Goodness me. And then while the other side is cooking, you can start laying down that Swiss cheese over the top. Also, one thing I forgot to do before we started cooking the burger. That delicious butteriness. Oh my goodness me. Like, let them cool down before you do butter them, otherwise they'll crinkle right up. But you want to give them a nice little butter once they've cooled down. So that burger's ready to come out. So we're gonna pop that into a little tray. And that's gonna go into the oven just to melt that cheese for about two or three minutes. So while this blazing inferno is still going, what we wanna do is carefully cut open our brioche bun. Oh my goodness me. Look at that little joy right there. So, so happy. And then using some of the bacon fat just to rub over the inside of the brioche bun and then we're just gonna to toast it for roughly about 30 seconds to a minute just for a bit of char grilling and a little bit of toasting. So keep an eye on these. These will toast very, very quickly. So make sure you keep an eye on them. Don't leave them for too long. So there we go, 40 seconds in. It's already perfectly toasted, so we'll take them straight out. So that burger's just come out and it's ready to rest for about four minutes. So the first thing we wanna do is start off with that burger sauce. Then we want to put on our beautifully washed iceberg lettuce. Then our beautiful, juicy, medium rare burger. I'm hoping it'll be medium rare. And obviously, not forgetting that crispy, crispy bacon. So there it is. Our perfect brioche burger. And uh, trust me, you want to give this a go. List of ingredients will be below in the description box if you want to try this, but uh, I think it's time for taste test. So we're going down the middle. Oh my goodness me. That little cheeky pink right there turned out an absolute treat. So we're gonna have a little try. So here it is. Oh my goodness me. Oh, smells fantastic. I can't wait. This is gonna get very, very messy very quickly. So uh, let's get in here. Oh my God. Mmm. Wow. The flavor from the burger, those brioche buns. Sweetness, the, the beautiful butteriness in there. Oh my goodness me. And then you got the crispy, salty bacon, the crunch from the, the lettuce. You don't want too much lettuce flavor going on, but maybe you do. It's up to you what lettuce you want if you're not a big fan of iceberg. And then that salty, Swiss, nutty cheese. Oh my goodness me. 
This is an absolute dream. <sighs> Probably one of the best burgers I've had in a very long time. Also, a quick reminder, make sure you grab a napkin. You don't want to be a messy sod like me. So that's all we got time for this week. I hope you enjoyed that perfect brioche bun burger. Oh my goodness me, what an absolute little treat. Please feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. In addition, if you want to make this burger, that will be below in my description box and you can uh, put this little devil together if you want to. Also feel free to check out our sponsor, the Salty Dog Spice Company. They've got some fantastic salts there. If you use the code name CHEF10 on your order, you'll get 10% discount, so feel free to go check them out. And while I'm away until next Monday, I'll be live on Twitch, Tuesday to Friday, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, cooking some delightful dishes live. So feel free to come and stop by. And until next week, amigos, stay safe, happy, and awesome.